Hello and welcome to this reaction of The Big Bang Theory. Uh, we are on season two, episode 17. Really, really, really started, really, really started to like the show a lot. You're starting to see the, the group dynamic kind of blossom between them. I feel like obviously everyone picks on Sheldon, everyone picks on Penny. Their character traits are starting to come out like just like who Howard is, who Raj is. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So without further ado, let's get to the show. I can't do this. It's not right. Sheldon, you have two choices. Either you let him put a bigger hard drive in the TiVo or you delete stuff before we go out of town. But once you open the box, you voided the warranty. <laughs> the warranty is a sacred covenant we've entered into with the manufacturer. He offers to stand by his equipment and we in return agree not to violate the integrity of the internal hardware. This little <laughs> orange sticker is all that stands between us and anarchy. <laughs> Oh my. Okay. I love San Francisco. I wish I was going with you. I understand your envy. This is a can't miss symposium. There are going to be discussions on bioorganic cellular computer devices, the advancements in multi threaded task completion, plus a round table on the non equilibrium Green's function approach to the photo ionization process in atoms. She's just like, uh huh. When I go, I usually just get hammered and ride the cable cars. <laughs> this creation cemented our understanding of the origin of the universe. I don't think Penny still cares. A funny name though, Smoot. It's like talking to a chimp. <laughs> okay, now that I've been completely insulted, have a good flight. Yeah, I wish. We're not flying. We're taking the train. Three of us voted for airplane. Sheldon voted for train, so we're taking the train. Why don't you just let him take the train by himself? Don't say it like that, Leonard. Say it like we're taking the train. <laughs> He's so excited. What on earth are you doing? Whatever it is, I'm guessing you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is the Coast Starlight, one of the great American trains operating on one of the classic American routes. On this side, you'll see panoramic ocean vistas inaccessible to any other form of transportation, while on your side, you'll be treated to 350 miles of Costco's Jiffy Lubes and cinder block hoax of a pre-1980 Pullman-built Superliner Deluxe passenger coach. Obviously. Sheldon, we've been on this train 90 seconds and you've I've already said a thousand words. Just tell us where to sit and shut up. <laughs> Here. I'm hoping once you reap the endorphic rewards of the steady clickety clack, hold your naked buttocks to the chilly air of Rajasthan. <laughs> No. To third class on Indian Railway's magnificent Ranikpur Express and its 1,200 kilometer journey from Maharashtra to the Beaconer Junction. Oh, look, now he's boring on an international scale. <laughs> Holy crap, look. Is that who I think it is? Hey! It be. What would Summer Glau be doing riding the train? Uh, it's Summer Glau from the Sarah Connor Chronicles. You, no, Summer, don't kill me. I'm pro robot. <laughs> What? At least she's off the train crap. Uh, See, you know her from that, boys. Sheldon, I know her from apology. Taking the Firefly. Train is a stroke of brilliance. I've actually got a shot at a Terminator. Oh, please. When it comes to Terminator, so much better. a better shot of scoring with Arnold Schwarzenegger. On the side of a hill, she will eventually succumb to the acquired taste that is Howard Wallowitz. It is ridiculous. My money's on tuck and roll. I'm confused. I thought you were involved in some sort of socially intimate pairing with Leslie Winkle. <laughs> Sheldon, let me explain to you how this works. All right. That's Summer Glau. Well, you know the old saying, pasty and frail never fail. <laughs> that is terrible. Excuse me, Winkle, what about me? Why don't I get a shot? Fine. Go ahead. Take a shot. You know, I've already got a gorgeous blonde back home that I can't score with. What's the matter? I forgot my flash drive. So? So we have to go back. Okay, Sheldon, I'm going to say why, and your answer cannot be because I forgot my flash drive. <laughs> You don't understand. My flash drive has my paper on astrophysical probes of M theory effects in the early universe that I was going to give to George Smoot at the conference. Nothing you can do about it, so relax. Sit back, enjoy the clickety clack of the steel wheels on the polished rails. Uh. You forgot your flash drive. You forgot your flash drive. You only 10 hours, 55 minutes to go. <laughs> but look, 
Jenny's home. Why don't we just call her, have her go in the apartment, get your flash drive, and email you the paper? But the flash drive is in a locked drawer in my desk. So? The key is hidden in my room. So? Penny would have to go into my room. So? The people don't go in my room. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the flash drive? Well, it seems once again you're caught between a rock and a crazy place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> like he went with it here. We're putting the play on for one night in this little 99-seat theater. Can you come? Oh, great. Do you know 98 other people that might want to come? <laughs> oh, hang on. Hello? Listen carefully. I'm about to give you a set of instructions which you must follow to the letter. Just a second. Hi. The theater is above a bowling alley, so it's a little <laughs> noisy, but it might be the... Oh. Oh. Okay, great. I'll see you then. Hello? Okay, step four. <laughs> Dilden, she said, hold on. Plastic case on my dresser. Your dresser? Who is this? It's Sheldon. Oh, hey, Sheldon. How's San Francisco? I'm not in San Francisco. I'm on a train. Were you even listening to me? Uh, no, I was talking to my friend, but what's up? Please or favor. Okay. <laughs> Enough chit chat. Okay, step one. Locate your emergency key to our apartment. <laughs> Enough chit chat. Two, enter our apartment. Step three. Enter my bedroom. <laughs> Step four. No, hang on, Sheldon. Get another call. Get those. <laughs> you are on TV in Firefly. You are actually in space. River. I had to go look up her name. Guys, you really believe that, are you? You mean one of the hopeless geeks? No. Those are crazy people. <laughs> Howard, be a deer and get me another one of these. Is that what he's drinking? It's not even real beer. What? Look at it. Not alcoholic beer. No. What's going on? I don't know. Some sort of placebo effect, I guess. Placebo, you say? Interesting. Yes, I'm still here. Don't Where do it to him. I'm on a train. Don't now. do it, Howard. The names of constellations are different. Where you have the Big Dipper, we have the Big Curry Pot. You're making that up. You got me. <laughs> now, what are you going to do with me? Raj? Yes? Look. What am I looking at? You tell me. Non-alcoholic beer, yeah. <laughs> Sheldon, are these letters from your grandmother? Don't read those letters. Oh, look, she calls you Moon Pie. That is so cute. Put down the letters. Moon Pie? <laughs> hey, Penny, it's Leonard. Hey, Leonard, how's the train ride? Delightful. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what you're doing right now, but there are little bubbles forming in the corner of Sheldon's mouth. I'm back. What up, Moon Pie? <laughs> No one calls me Moon Pie, but Meemaw. Hey, Penny Leonard again. <laughs> so anyway, in the dream, you and I were ice skating, just the two of us. And then I picked you up by your ankles and twirled you round and round. It comes from the German words pumper and nickel, which loosely translates to fart goblin. No. She looks so scared. I do like her character in Arrow, too. Okay, I found the box. Now what? You're holding a Japanese puzzle box, which takes 10 precise moves to open. Do you have any emotional attachment to this box? No, it's a novelty I ordered off the internet. Did you hear the click? No. Not yet. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Did he hear it? Oh my goodness. Okay, here's another one. No. no. Leave you in peace. Thank you. He isn't, is he? But before I go, <laughs> would you mind if I just take one picture of us together from my Facebook page? The flash drive into the USB port. <sighs> she calls me Moon Pie because I'm nummy nummy and she could just eat me up. <laughs> Now, please, put the flash drive in the USB port. The one that looks like a little duck's mouth. In various scenarios in my head, trying to come up with some clever line to say to you, but then I finally realized you're a human being, I'm a human being. I could just say to you... Stop Santa Barbara! I'm sorry, this is me. <laughs>
Good try. Hi, my name's Leonard. <laughs> Howard ruined it for you. So I'm saying when we win the Nobel Prize, you'll be back on top. With all due respect, Dr. Cooper, are you on crack? <laughs> what? Fine, Smoot Cooper. Wow, what a diva. Boom pie. And he calls her Mima. Yeah, he's from the South. That's so funny. Oh my goodness. Um, this is another funny episode. Good seeing Summer Glau. Um, was not expecting that one. I think that might be the second cameo from an actor in Hollywood that I can remember. Definitely one that's a little bit more popular than the guy that was a physicist earlier in the season or last season, whatever it was. But, uh, I liked it. It was good, good, funny. Raj apparently could talk to women with fake beer. Something to think about. Interesting. Nice little placebo effect they had going on there. Sheldon and Penny. The way they play off each other is so damn funny. I love it. It is the perfect combination of him being super smart, unable to deal with people, and Penny just being just your normal person. Just like me. Probably most of you. She's one of us, and Sheldon's like a savant that can do, can see freaking atoms. And she just pokes every little button that he has and it's just too funny but um had a lot of fun hope you enjoyed the reaction like share subscribe comment below and until next time take care oh.